Did you hear it, dear congregation? Did you hear Paul's prayer for you? Did you hear what Paul, reaching across the pages of time, all the way to today, what he expresses that he would wish for you, for me, for believers here today in Meridian at Highland Baptist Church. It's all summed up, first of all, with a very simple but profound understanding. He prays that we may be filled with the knowledge of His will. Wouldn't all of us love to get up on Monday morning and be able to say, I know what God would have me do today. I know what God's will is for me today. Today, I clearly understand where God would have me go and those things that God would have me do. Wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to get up and say, I know and understand these things? That is Paul's prayer. And if I were to say what my prayer for you is and my prayer for myself is, it is the same thing. That we might each and every day gain an understanding, a knowledge, a knowing of what God's will is. Let me make sure you understand something very simple and very basic about the will of God. Our tendency is to always to want to assume that the will of God comes down to a set of circumstances, a particular turn at a particular fork in the road, or to illustrate it more graphically, that the will of God is a dot, and it's a place where you go and stand on that dot, and there you are in the will of God. But the Bible presents a different image. The will of God is not a dot, a particular set of circumstances, a particular turn in a road, though he may lead you a particular way at a turn in the road. The will of God is a relationship. God's will is that you enter into a relationship with him through Jesus Christ. That's why God sent his son. He sent His Son so that we might be forgiven of our sins. And in that forgiveness, we might be established in a relationship with the Father. Paul says this when he says, To as many as received Him, to them He gives the power to become children of God, even to them who believe upon His name. We become His child by faith. We enter into a relationship with Him. That's the essence of God's will. Now, God's call will sometimes involve specific circumstances. His call may sometimes involve that you make a specific turn at a specific intersection in life. But God's will is a relationship. And automatically, there are going to be certain things that are outside of God's will, things that will harm the relationship. Therefore, we need, in seeking His will, it needs to come to us with wisdom and understanding. This is His prayer. As a matter, I've read from the New American Standard Bible, in the New International Version, and in the King James Version, it more specifically talks about the Holy Spirit. That His will comes to us through God's Spirit, through spiritual wisdom and spiritual understanding. I don't know if you've ever thought about it this way before, but you and I gain understanding of God's will, of that relationship, and how He would have us grow in a relationship with Him as the Holy Spirit works in our lives through others. It's always through others. Let me illustrate it a little differently. This is the Bible. This is one of my old Bibles. It's kind of beat up. The reason I picked this Bible up is because I left the Bible I like to use on Sundays at home this morning. So I had to pick this one up. It's still a holy Bible. It works just fine. This is the Bible. We're charged to hide His Word in our heart. Don't ever make the mistake of concluding that that part of His Word you've hidden in your heart is the Bible. It's not. It's the part that you understand. It's not the whole and sum and total. 
There is the Bible and then there's my Bible. My Bible is that part I've studied and read and learned and understand and found application into my life. The Bible, my Bible. My goal is that as much as possible, my Bible becomes the Bible, the Word of God. But this is the Bible. But you know, as a child, my Bible was really my mother's Bible. Because when I was a little kid, I didn't know and understand anything about the things of God. And what I did come to know, I came to know it from my parents, my mother and my father, and my grandmother that lived with us. My Bible was their Bible. Because that was the only way I came to know the things of God. It was sitting with my parents that I learned my first Bible verse, probably the same one you learned. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. At a point in my life, that was the entire Bible for me. That was my Bible. That's all I had. That's what I put in my heart. It wasn't the Bible, but it was my Bible. It's what God had put there for me. And God put it there for me through my parents. What was my parents' Bible became my Bible. All leading that we might know the Bible. Do you understand the process that I'm talking about? Mom and dad, grandma and granddad here today, you are the Bible for your young children. You are the embodiment of the truth of God to them. And the Holy Spirit is going to use you more than anyone else to help transfer into their lives the Bible. He's also going to use Sunday school teachers and Iwana teachers and music teachers and other people, godly men and women that are involved in children's lives. That's how the Holy Spirit works works. And as the Bible becomes more and more my Bible, then I grow to know more and more of an understanding of God's will for me and for my life. That's why the fellowship that is the fellowship of believers, it is the local church, is of such critical importance. How in the world can you ever expect to become what God would have you to become and the relationship that God would have you to have with him in isolation. His Bible, his truth, his word, his will comes to us and comes into our life. And as it comes into us, it gives us understanding, spiritual wisdom and understanding.